Welcome everybody, Double Tap here, and today I bring you guys the Ultimate Prison Architect Beginner's Guide. Let's hop right into this because I've got lots to cover today. Let's get things going. Alright, so first things first, you want to hop right into your reports, go to intake, and set it to closed because we do not want any prisoners coming before we actually have a prison built. After you do that, you're going to want to go down to grants and you're going to go and grab this basic detention center grant as well as the administration center grant as these are basically the beginner jobs that you're going to have to do anyway. So you might as well grab that, get a nice $55,000 worth of money that we could play with to build right off the hop. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start things off a little bit differently here. I'm going to basically section off this top right corner here, and this is going to be for our deliveries, our garbage and our exports, as well as our power sources. So we're going to build a nice little box just for staff members over here in the right. And we're going to set some staff doors in there immediately so that they can get access and they're not completely blocked out. Now that we've set that up with this little box, we are gonna come down here and delete the original garbage and deliveries because we don't want it there. And we're gonna move it up here towards the north of the map here. So I'm gonna make a nice large deliveries area, a 10 by 10, and I'm going to do the same for the garbage and we will make the exports just slightly smaller. But for the garbage and deliveries, we're gonna go 10 by 10. It's very important to put the exports here because you'll notice right in the beginning once wood starts coming down you don't have to press sell or anything like that your workers will immediately bring it to the exports area and they will pick it up in trucks and you will get paid for it so it is very important to have at least one exports area as it does save a lot of time here i'm going to set the power station just above the exports area i am going to try to set the water pump but for whatever air uh, for whatever reason i think it might be because there's trees there or whatever it may be it's not allowing me to set it but once we get these trees dismantled it will let me set it down and we're going to put the water and the electrical power station right next to each other as they do have to be connected anyways we're going to get them building up that fence there set it on super speed just to get things going here see you'll notice right there they grab the wood and they set it in the exports area getting ready to get picked up so extremely handy having an exports make sure that you do have one in there it will save a lot of time and it will make you some extra money with anything that could be sold so keep that in mind make sure you do add exports in there all right so now we have our deliveries our garbage area all set up and we also have our power set down with some water so we have the necessities of the utilities set down which is very important and i'm just going to add some extra doors here so that they don't have to be funneled down into that bottom door area there staff can move freely in and out of there as much as they want so now a very very important step is we're going to use our planning tool of course we never set anything down that isn't absolutely necessary i will leave the dimensions i'm using here down in the description that's an 8 by 35 for this initial building here um, i will set them down there though for your guys convenience if you want to copy it exactly so do keep that in mind just look down in the description if you need some extra help with that for this one we're going to go 35 by 16 and set that down pre-plan everything before you set anything down because why cost yourself some money if it's not going to work out in the end so for this final box here we're going to go 10 by 34 and all of this will start to make sense as we put this together these buildings will be used for specific areas you will see shortly but now that I know where my buildings are gonna go, I am gonna start fencing out the surrounding area. I'm gonna have a nice large loop of fence surrounding the entire prison so that we have a little bit of space to expand out as well. And I know that the entire area is enclosed. 
We do not want any escapes in this prison. And you'll see right there, a truck just drove by with all the wood that they're exporting out. And you'll see I got $700 worth of exports. So extremely handy having exports in there. And now that we have everything planned out, I am going to select the building and we're going to use concrete for our prison and get things going here. This initial room that I'm setting doors there will be our intake. And uh, I can't set doors on that one building yet because there's trees so we're gonna allow them to build it up and then we will be able to set doors in there letting our little minions go to work giving you guys the overall view see how everything's coming together I will show you guys how you can use grants here to build a ultimate prison without having to worry about money at all we won't be running into any financial issues here and it's gonna be even larger than what I'm showing you here this is just the original base that we're going to use until we start getting these extra grants flowing you guys will see how everything works out really really smoothly for this prison I will say too that the original delivery area is not large enough. They give you just a little block, but look at how much is filled with our deliveries right now. It's 10 by 10 and it's almost completely covered. So having a nice large deliveries area is really, really important. So do keep that in mind. 10 by 10 is the smallest that would go. And down here I am going to set two jail doors this is going to be for our canteen in our kitchen and on the right side i will be setting a staff door very very shortly here and that is going to be our storage area which is also an extremely important room and can save you some money in the long haul but don't worry we will flush these buildings out and have them looking like a prison very very soon go now I'm going to come across here and set our original jail door there this is where our cell blocks will be all those little flashing electricity signs are basically just telling us that we need to connect our power grid and uh, we will do that very very soon here but that's what they're asking for there with those little notifications so what we're gonna do is take care of that right now for them and we're gonna grab the electrical cable and you always have to hook your electrical cables up to your water pump station keep that in mind it does require electricity to operate so make sure that you always connect the two before you uh, get anything else going here I'm going to just drag down the power electrical cables and we're going to make sure that there's at least electrical cables touching every single room. Let there be light. The beginning of a prison is always my favorite stage. It's so fun seeing something come from nothing. I absolutely adore it. And here we're going to just set one of the staff gate doors there so that they can have access to all of our buildings from our deliveries area as well. And here you go. I'm finally connecting our water station with our power grid. And this is a mistake. I pressed power switches here. I meant to click capacitors, but it happens so I will find out in a second and swap those over to capacitors fear not but yeah that's just a little silly mistake cost me a little bit of money but nothing too serious so we are gonna just add that last wall there because it was along a fence line so it didn't have that in there we're gonna make sure that's all enclosed
and yeah now we're going to use this planning area here and we're going to plan out our actual cells along the very bottom of this i'm going to have some solitary confinement which have absolutely no requirements as long as there's a room it constitutes as solitary confinement so we're going to have ours really tight because this is not where they want to be anyways they would like to be in their luxurious cells if you will and uh our cells are going to be a little bit larger this time than before we're going to go seven by five and you will see why shortly it's going to be a little bit different in this prison instead of having a traditional shower we're actually going to go with showers inside of the cells for many reasons it it's just overall a better design in my opinion and it cuts down on opportunities for uh, inmates to actually interact with each other so it keeps all things like violence hypothetically down and it just allows things to run a lot smoother and it's easier for the prisoners themselves they don't actually have to leave their cells to hit the shower block they can just shower right in their cell so it's convenient all way around and it keeps the security of your prison up so that's very important why i'm going to make these cells just slightly larger remember we're going to go seven by five for those and in the top left of our cell blocks there we're going to have our holding cell so that's why you saw me cut that little top left corner there and here i'm just going to start separating out these bottom rooms here which again is right here is going to be our storage room that's why i'm going to be placing a staff door and then to the left of it will be the kitchen and then to the left of that will be the canteen all of our workers are busy we're exporting lots of wood there because our buildings had to cut down tons of trees so again you're going to see the exports being used right away we just made one thousand dollars worth of exports and there's still more wood flooding out so extremely useful having an exports up there and uh, there's nothing really you have to do other than set it down and your workers will do the rest so it's worth it having it there we can use all the money in the beginning that's for sure so here we're going to just connect the rest of this to the power grid make sure that all of our buildings have power again 950 dollars worth of exports so really really useful and here it's time to connect our water to our prison so we're going to grab large pipes remember always use large pipes if you are trying to transfer the water across large areas never use small pipes unless you are just trying to connect individual things to the water sources whenever you're going to be traveling with long distances with the water you want to use the large pipes and drag them along the outsides of your buildings here and it will just make for easy connection for everything that is required inside of those said buildings so there we go we're going to have them building out the water pipes you will notice that you could build water pipes right over top of the electrical system it, it doesn't matter so you can have them overlapping and uh for for this case a lot of it is going to be overlapping but it's not an issue at all they're all buried underground anyway so it works out nicely and here i realized that i have power switches grabbed instead of capacitors so yeah now we're gonna actually get the proper capacitors down and make sure that we have enough power for our prison to operate and now it's time to take the concrete walls and actually start drawing out our cells here including our holding cells and our solitary it's gonna start looking more and more like a prison as we go here guys Again, you can see that I trapped one of my workers in there. It's extremely, extremely important that you set doors on every single individual room or else this will happen. You'll have workers that are trapped and that's no good. We don't want that. So I'm gonna pause right away and start setting in the doors so that that doesn't happen anymore. As you can see, we have another worker that's about to get trapped down there. So let's make sure we add doors and get everything situated. Here, I'm just adding doors even though there's no walls it won't make any difference at all we'll be able to just come in and draw the walls behind it and there you go now we have a solitary area for those that want to act up right off the hop or at any point during their stay at their new home 
All right, so we're starting to get things going here. We are going to get rid of these power switches because it's not necessary. I have the money, so I'm going to add some extra capacitors there because we want to have enough power to run this prison for the next little while for the foreseeable future here. So we will add some extra capacitors. Make sure I get a door here in my holding cell. Alright, there you go. Holding cell is situated now. All of our cells have doors as, long, uh, as well as our solitary. So things are starting to come together here. It's starting to look like an actual prison is being built. Here, I was just looking for the actual cells there, having a little bit of a brain fart, but I did find them there. So we're going to map out what we want every single room to be. We're going to have our cells, our solitary to the south, and our holding cell here. There you go. Nice and clean. And those little red triangles, if you hover over top of them, will let you know exactly what is required in that said room. So do keep that in mind. Now. Here to the south of this initial building where our intake will be, we are going to have our staff rooms and our actual staff area for them to hang out and get rest. So I'm just drawing that out. They require a four by four per staff room and you're going to want four of those. So we're going to draw those in right now and their little staff room area will be separated off from all of the prison except for intake. So the only time there will be actual prisoners around our staff is when they are coming in or leaving the prison. Other than that, there's basically no contact between our workers and employees and our actual inmates. So this is why I found this to be a really good method for our staff rooms. So we're gonna start drawing those in, get those all situated. And this is one of the ways that you can manipulate the grants really easily. Getting the administration center all set up and having all of our staff rooms is one of the easiest things you can do right off the get go. So it's easy money and it allows you to grab another grant. So we're gonna get that situated first things first. And there again, you're gonna see that's where I set my staff room where they can lounge and have some rest. And to the south of that, all of those are gonna be their actual offices. And there you go to finish the administration center we only have to build two so we're gonna do just that we're gonna just complete having the two offices and get a warden in finance going see if you hover over top it says it requires an office office desk a chair and a filing cabinet. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna set two down there and we're gonna set some chairs down. They're gonna bring them in right away and then we're gonna put some filing cabinets just to the bottom right there and get a complete office ready for our warden and our finance staff. There you go. I'm just going to grab a warden, set him down, and there you go. The office automatically changes to warden's office. And here through the bureaucracy in the top left, you'll find that we're going to unlock finance for $500 so that we can hire an accountant and they can take care of our financial necessities. And as you can see, the warden is now researching that for us. You, It requires a warden in order to actually unlock the bureaucracy tab, so that's why you'll see him actually researching that for us there. So there you go. We're starting to see a prison come together slowly but surely.
and here I'm just going to fence off a large area right to the left of our cell blocks and this is going to be our yard for our prisoners so that they can get some yard time and get outside for some outdoor activity. And for that I'm just going to set a door to the bottom left of our cell block so that they have access directly from their main cell block to our yard. Again, keeping the flow of prisoners to a minimum, having them all within one area and having easy access to everything just lowers the possibility for security threats or anything going wrong. So that's the goal here. There you go, added a staff door there because you can see that our workers were trapped there after hooking up that yard so I'm gonna have that situated all right so now that our accountant is unlocked gonna buy that right away and there you go we get our grant the rest of it given to us the five thousand dollar payment and now we could come select another grant which is how we keep this money flowing in the very very beginning I am going to take the staff, uh, the reform education initiative, sorry. And the reason I'm going to take that is because it's such a large grant. And even though we're not going to be taking care of it right away, I do know that our basic detention center is going to be X'd off very shortly here because that's the next thing we're going to take care of. We're going to start building out our cells. And then once we have that set, we'll be able to get access to another grant. So we're just keeping this money flowing without actually opening up our prison so that we have a nice prison to open up when this is all said and done. So we're going to get beds in each of these cells going right now and then from there we're going to start adding toilets the necessities and then from that point we're going to actually start adding showers as well because like I told you guys we're gonna have showers in the actual individual cells for these inmates so here we go with what I was saying earlier as well we're gonna start grabbing small pipes we're gonna drag them out to all of these individual necessities from the large pipes riding the outside walls. So that's why it's nice having those large pipes coming down the outside walls of all your buildings. It makes it really easy to connect anything that you have to with the small pipes from that point. So our minions are going to work. We're gonna connect all of these up to water sources so that each cell has the water required. And now we're just going to start setting down these drains because every single cell will require a drain as we do have a shower. So the water will have to go somewhere. So now it's time to place the shower heads right on top of those drains. And we're gonna have a shower per cell. Again, a lot of these, uh, these methods that I'm using now have been recommended through all of the previous tutorials that I've done. So this prison is kind of a mashup of everything that I've learned from you guys. So this is the ultimate prison to me. This this is really our prison if you want to look at it like that because I wouldn't have been able to build this without all the help from you guys. So I hope you guys are enjoying. Let's keep getting this thing going. The holding cell requires pretty much nothing just a toilet and some benches so it's really really small requirements so we'll get that hooked up there throw some benches and there you go we have a holding cell All the messages you see over the holding cell and the cells it's just saying that we have no canteen which we don't so we'll get that situated asap Here I'm just cleaning up some of these trees because we will be using this area shortly anyways and we can use the extra money so I'm just clearing out a little bit of these trees dismantling them and again you'll see them dragging them all out to exports right away so that a truck can come and we can get paid. Alright so now it's time for the next step which is getting our canteen 
and our kitchen area all set up. You'll see they have quite a few of these rooms actually highlighted for us here. It's just notifying us that we need these rooms set up for this prison. So it's a nice little handy thing. Going to set our kitchen to in the center there and our canteen to our left. And let's not forget our storage room to the far right here. All right. So now it's just a matter of highlighting over top of them and seeing what is required. So serving table, a table and a bench. So we're going to start getting that set up again. This is kind of temporary for all of these buildings because all of these will be expanded before the episode is complete. But for right now, we're just kind of setting some placeholders so that we actually have the requirements and it says that it's done. So we're going to get it built up, but keep in mind that we're not quite done with these yet. So I'm just going to set some down here and get some things situated. And that's how I like to set my canteen up. I'll set the table and then two bench, a bench on each side, kind of like lunchroom back in the day when I was in public school and stuff. So that's how I like to set mine up. And for the kitchen, it requires cookers, a fridge, and a sink. We're going to start placing a few down here because I'm just preparing for the future. We are going to have quite a few chefs and everything going, so might as well place quite a few down and be prepared. So we're going to set the sinks down, stove. Again, this is not where I'm setting things permanently, but just kind of temporary placeholders for now. Get some fridges in there. To rotate if you guys are curious I'm just clicking in the middle mouse button so if you guys have a mouse a little scroll button on the mouse just click and that will allow you to rotate things really really easily so again this is why it's so handy having all the water flowing from the exteriors of your building all i have to do is go click two small little pipes there and we have water to our kitchen simple as that Here I'm just looking for yard as I'm going to finally actually draw out our yard area here. There you go. It's as simple as that. As long as you have an outdoor area, it is considered yard. There is nothing required in it. However, in the next episode, we will trick it out a little bit and give our prisoners something to do. But for now, we're going to keep everything very simple and just meet the requirements so that we get these grants going. And I don't love how dark it is around all of these outdoor areas at nighttime, so I am gonna just set up some lights here. Just skip a few blocks periodically and just click, get some light going. It it really does help with the overall ambiance, and they're quite cheap, so. There you go, much, much better. And we're gonna do the same in the yard area down here. Just drag along the perimeter, skip a few blocks each time, and bing, bang, boom. Done. And there you go. That definitely helps. It makes it feel like something that's going to be lived in eventually, so that's good. All right, so now we just have to have a shower set up. So because we don't actually have any showers within our prison, obviously, because they're in individual cells, it's really, really easy to achieve this for the grant. All you have to do is basically take off one of these cells and switch it to a shower. And because the shower is already set up in these cells, it will constitute as having a shower in your prison. So you'll see me do that right now.
right now and we're gonna go ahead and just delete one of these cells out and highlight it with shower and then you'll see right in the top left shower is complete even though it only has one shower head in there so we're gonna hire the two guards the two cooks and there you go that grant is complete we get an extra 10 grand and now we can actually grab another grant as well so this is how you get the money flowing in the beginning without having to worry about actually bringing in prisoners so we can just keep rotating grants here until we have a prison that we're happy with Remember to take the shower off of that one cell that you do switch the shower though and switch it back to cell. That is extremely important. Or else they won't give it to a prisoner. So do make sure you switch it back. But yeah, makes it really easy to achieve all of those for the grants. And uh, trust me, it just it's so nice having the showers inside of the cells. It works out really, really smoothly. So here we're going to start to expand this cell block because we have money to play with now. So this is why I was saying we're not going to open up right away. We're not going to start allowing them in, even though we actually have a prison that can run. We're going to keep expanding and get things where we want them before opening up so that we can make a nice chunk of money right out of the hop with our prison. So we're going to just drag some cells up here again. It's seven by five and i'm just going to keep dragging them up until i reach an area that i'm happy with up here and uh then we're going to add some more solitary the nice thing about having a reception area which i was missing in one of my previous tutorials is in the reception area when your prisoners come in they'll automatically search them before actually releasing them into the public area so there will be some prisoners that are going to end up getting caught here in the very beginning with contraband and we do want to have some solitary set down for any of those said prisoners so do make sure that you leave a little bit of area for solitary always it's important and if anything happens in the future within your prison with any drama you're going to want to have a segregated area for your guards to be able to place those volatile inmates so make sure you always leave some room for solitary so we got that done we have quite a few solitary cells now we should be good for the next little while even for our next expansion in a continued episode we should have more than enough solitary for the next little bit all right so now that i have that all planned out it's time to build And you'll notice the next grant that I grabbed is cell block A. And the only requirement for cell block A is to raise your prisoner capacity to 15. So once we get this top cell block built out and expanded on, we'll automatically get that $20,000 grant. And you guys can see how money just keeps flowing and we never even get near running out of money here just because we've thought things through and planned things out properly. We still have $40,000 and as soon as we're done building out this next area, we're gonna have another 20 handed right to us. So keeping money flowing it makes it really easy to keep building and expanding out on our prison so that's what we're going to do you guys already know the drill for these because we did it just to the south of this area here and we're just going to mimic that exact same area up on this northern part And you'll notice in the top left, I left a big chunk of area and walking space and didn't use it all up because we are eventually going to expand this prison out in future episodes to the left of this is what I'm already planning. So we're going to want to be able to have some type of walking access to the next cell block. So that's what I'm leaving a little bit of space on this top area and on the bottom on the pre previous one that we've already built that's so that they can have access to the yard. So always do keep in mind and plan ahead for what you're planning on doing in the future it's not always about right now and we don't want to have to tear anything down in future episodes we rather just build out that's our goal here all 
all right watching them get to work you'll notice right away that it's dark in that area it's because we have to build out our electrical cables as well as our water so that's what i'm going to do right away is get that situated just pull one electrical cable out there and it will be suffice for the entire building I do find it funny how dirty the prison gets immediately like look at all of these rooms that have already been built they are filthy and nobody's even living in it so it's kind of curious to me why they get so dirty so quickly when there's no actual people living in them it doesn't really make sense if i had a bunch of prisoners i'd understand why it's getting so dirty but anyways i digress we're gonna end up having cleaners and make sure that this prison's completely clean before allowing intake anyway i'm just it's something that i've noticed it's very odd to me but anyways i digress we're going to just demolish this fence here and take down those doors because it's not really necessary anymore as there's a building there so we don't need to worry about any security leaks there and the fencing around it on the outside works perfectly with the wall there as well so All right, so time to start labeling these actual cells. Do the same with solitary. God, those are small, those cells. I would not want to get trapped in there. Talk about anxiety, goodness gracious. All right, now we're just going to start slapping in beds. You guys know the routine, beds. We're going to get our toilet and our showers in this prison. It's, it's much nicer design in my opinion having the showers in there and just having a little bit of extra space in the cell it's overall just a little bit better of a design you guys could even make yours a little bit bigger if you wanted or smaller however i do find this is that nice kind of happy medium where it's not too large or not too small set all the toilets now start setting drains one thing i did forget to do here that i will add in the next episode for sure is windows because i can add windows to the cells and it will increase the overall happiness of our inmates and that is something that i will make sure to add for the next episode because that is handy And I remember learning in architecture school that there is some solid science behind that. Having natural light in any room increases the overall happiness of being in that room quite a bit. And it will even increase students' grades if they're in a classroom that they can actually have natural light flooding in. You'll notice a large increase of their actual overall happiness and grades rather than if they were in a room that's in complete darkness and there's no actual natural light other than just lights from the ceiling. So. This is why it's, it, it does make sense in a prison setting that if you're gonna be locked somewhere for a large majority of your time, having some type of natural light from the sun would help considerably. So I do need to remember for the next episode, but always add cell uh, windows if it's actually accessible. Of course, if you have a room that is tied up against another cell, it's gonna be kind of pointless, but if you have them facing the outside, do add windows. And here we're just going to grab the small pipes and start connecting them to the main power sources. On the left, you'll notice that it's missing the large pipe for all of those little cut areas. It's because they don't have access, but I'm about to realize that very shortly here. And I'll give them access to the outside of that building so that they can continue the large pipes on the left here where I'm adding. You'll notice the little red X's on the left. It's it's basically the game's way of telling you that they cannot access that to continue the build. So we will take care of that situation very, very shortly here.
But we're gonna get all these cells built out. God, it's annoying how gross it is and disgusting. I can't believe how dirty it gets with nobody actually living in this cell block. Makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, and this is when I realized that if I just set a staff door here, it will allow them to go through, add a staff door, and then they'll be able to access that area to continue the large pipes on the outside of that wall. So sometimes it's not anything wrong with the game. It's actually just something that you have to figure out. But I was able to figure it out after a couple seconds of thinking there. It's just because they didn't have access to this left side of the building. So once I added a staff door, they're able to come in and continue those up really, really quickly for me. So do keep in mind that if you run into any area sometimes you just got to sit there and think on it a little bit and figure out what the game's asking you to do but that's one of the best parts of the game because it is extremely fulfilling when you do get everything working so smoothly all right so now we have a cell block that's worth opening up to the to the prisoners at this point so we're going to we're almost there. We're almost there. We're not quite ready yet, but we're getting there. And this is just my OCD telling them to dump these boxes. It's, it's super annoying to me, and they just seem to be leaving it there. But anyways, this isn't necessary that you do this. clean this prison up a little bit do the cleaning that I can do <laughs> it's basically what you see me doing here just some house cleaning Yeah, and now I'm remembering that I only added TVs to the northern part here, so we're going to slap in some TVs for these bottom cells as well. Make sure that they have some extra entertainment and it just keeps their overall happiness up. So we're going to add those in and make sure that everybody has access to a TV and we can afford it, so why not, right? If it keeps them a little bit more tame being in this prison cell, then we might as well add it and give them a little bit something to do. And this is for the minimum and medium security prisoners anyway, so why not have TVs in there? And again, make sure that we're gonna grab a next grant because this is just gonna keep our money flowing. And we're gonna choose to go with the inmate health and well being because I do wanna build a medical ward and make sure that there is medical if anything happens in the prison to any of the prisoners. It is extremely important to have it, so we might as well get that situated now. And here you'll see me getting our groundskeeping going, although because I don't actually have the overall uh, elite staff member it's not going to start going until i set them down but i will set a foreman down eventually here and then they will start researching it just as you saw the warden research finance So 
so it's time to expand this out right now i'm not going to actually draw that i was just looking at how the, the overall size that i want to see it go down to that way i can just delete these fences out here and because we have no prisoners i can do things like this it's not a security risk taking down this exterior fence so i am going to just get rid of that altogether, and then we will expand this building out to the size that I want our canteen and kitchen to be and our storage here. Again, this is why it's so important keeping your prison closed and just having the freedom to build what you want before bringing them in because once you have prisoners in, building things changes a little bit and expanding the prison changes slightly because you don't want to have any security risks. So keep that in mind that if you are trying to keep things clean and fluid before you open it up just keep things closed until you're absolutely ready and you're happy with what you have laid down because as you can see money has never been an issue here from start to where we're at right now we just keep getting new grants and keep finishing previous ones so this is extremely important that you do it this way if you want to keep your prison moving smooth before you open it up And there they're just gonna get rid of all the exports in our garbage I'm gonna get a little bit of extra money there coming in from exports soon and now we have a nice large area to work with here and we'll build our real canteen and kitchen for our opening day gonna make sure that it has power and light and we're gonna start dragging down these walls And this time, make sure that you grab the canteen and stretch it out to the overall size that you want to use, or else they will not actually use that said area. It will They will just use the area that you have highlighted, so you would have expanded this room for nothing. So make sure that you re-grab those said rooms that you've expanded and drag them the entire width of the actual room itself. All right. So there you go. Now it's just time to manipulate this to where we actually want things and use the move tool whenever you are actually gonna keep items there but you just don't want them. Make sure you don't delete or anything like that. Just press the move tool and as you can see, it's very easy for your workers to come move things where you would actually like them to be. Extremely handy tool within the game for sure. And I decided a nice little clean method for doing this kitchen would to be to set the sinks in the middle of this pretty large kitchen and then you can have the fridges and the cookers on either side of those. So I do find this a nice little setup so we're going to continue this all the way down to the bottom of our kitchen here so that we're prepared for any future expansions of our prison. We're not going to have to worry about having too small of a kitchen or a canteen for this foreseeable future here. I know this may look like overkill, but that's one of the nice parts about actually using this grant method and going back and forth is you actually have the money to build things out and plan for the future without having to worry about going broke. So that's exactly what you see me doing here. Make sure that everything is connected to our power grid and our water grid. Mm -hmm. 
and make sure that as you expand your prison you add more capacitors because it is going to require more and more power the more you spread out those electrical necessities so keep that in mind because you will end up running into issues if you do not keep that consistent as you expand your prison so keep that in mind as you keep things going here we're going to use this move tool again and i'm just thinking how i'm going to set up this canteen overall but i do decide we're just going to move things over one step and then continue going down that way Then we're going to grab our serving tables and we're going to place them along this left wall here so that there's more room for more prisoners and this is where your cooks will come and set the prepared meals for your prisoners for the day so make sure that you have those set down and now it's just time to fill out the rest of the canteen with some tables and as you can see this canteen and kitchen is a nice size for quite the capacity of prisoners here so we will be good for for a little while for sure all right there you go gonna just fill the rest of this kitchen out and the reason you see me get putting little spaces on the left wall there where the cookers are is because I am going to add staff doors I forget to do that here but be sure that in the next episode there will be staff doors to give access between the kitchen and the canteen it's very very important so that your workers don't actually have to leave the kitchen to access the canteen they can just walk directly over to it and it makes it easier all the way around for bringing the prepared meals over to the canteen as well as going and getting the dishes to bring back to the actual kitchen when everybody's done eating so it just keeps things flowing a lot lot easier so make sure that you do add staff doors between your kitchen and your canteen at all times and here I'm finally gonna grab the foreman and set it down so that well actually first before we do that sorry I'm speaking too soon we only completed the two offices in the very beginning if you'll remember correctly so now we have to go and complete the other two and get them prepared and then I will place a foreman so that they can research the other things such as groundskeeping and our janitors because we need this prison cleaned for sure before we open it up because that's not going to have the prisoners very happy, happy coming into these disgusting cells. So keep that in mind that you do want cleaning in your prison as well. Absolute necessity. And you can also see it's so easy for your prison to get disgusting for whatever reason. So here we're going to just fill out our reception area and it requires an office desk, a table and a chair. So we're going to have our table set up right there and you'll notice they come put some uniforms there for our unlucky souls coming to this prison. And uh, yeah, now we just have to add a desk and a chair and that reception area is ready for inmates. And now it's just time to fill out our staff room here. It requires a sofa, a wide sofa, and a vending machine. So I'm going to place two sofas and two vending machines. And there you go. Now you have a staff room. So whenever our staff are tired, they can come hang out there and get a little bit of rest. 
and now that those offices are built we can finally hire a foreman and you'll see him go right in there foreman's office and he is immediately researching cleaning for us so that we can hire some janitors and we can get this damn prison cleaned up and I can stop talking about it <laughs> But yeah, now you can see we have something here that is ready for some prisoners and it's ready for future expansion. So we're in a really good spot now. Now it's just about some tidying up and getting things ready to actually open our prison up here for the final step. and cleaning is just about to be unlocked there and then you'll notice that groundskeeping is already queued up to go next and we are going to just make sure that we purchase some extra grants and loans so just in case we did run into any financial issues in the future we have three grants available to us instead of two and we can go get any loans from the actual bank and then pay them back afterwards as we have a higher income so those are just some like little safety nets basically that you can do so that you don't have to worry about your money so much. Okay, now our janitors are finally available so I'm gonna hire a few of them right now and let them get to work and you'll notice they have plenty to do right off the jump as this entire prison is disgusting so they're gonna go from room to room and clean it up and have everything ready for our actual intake the next day so satisfying finally getting this clean it bothers me so much but I love having them go to work and just watching them clean this entire cell block up And you can see after hiring all of these people, they do get paid every day. So our in income is down to $35. We're almost in the red. So this is why it is definitely going to be time to open up this prison after everything is clean and good to go because we need actual money coming in after this. We're not going to be able to just rely on grants forever. So it is going to be time to open this up, but we're just going to make sure that everything's absolutely ready before we allow them to come in. So much better now that it's clean so so much better those are some busy busy janitors they had their hands full as soon as they're hired All right, beautiful. Now, it's time to prepare for intake. Now, something extremely useful here as I count out these cells is always set the specific number of prisoners that you want to intake and don't just leave it open to intake prisoners whenever they see fit because you will end up with an excess of prisoners without the actual right amount of cells. So what you'll see here when I actually do open up my intake is I go to total prisoners, not fill capacity, not number per day, none of that. I go to total prisoners and set the amount of prisoners to cells that I have very 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 important because i have had them just continue to release prisoners here when i don't actually have the cells ready and that is a nightmare so always set it to total prisoners that you want count out however many cell blocks that you have and that's how many prisoners that you're going to want to bring in and then once you expand your prison recount how many new cells you have and you can open up to total prisoners and increase that number as you go
and as you can see in the top left we have four hours bet before 27 prisoners arrive it's going to be five minimum security and 22 normal security prisoners And now we are officially in the negative for our cash flow, but that's not going to be a problem because in a few hours here, we are going to have prisoners and we are going to have a proper income coming in. I made sure that I hired enough guards because there are going to be quite a few inmates coming here. So you're going to want to make sure that you have enough guards prepared for this. All right, and here they come. Now this prison becomes real. You'll notice all our guards come, they'll bring them into reception. You will see the little searching icon pop up because that is exactly what they're doing. They are searching each and every single one of these inmates and you'll notice right away that they're finding contraband and those prisoners that are found with contraband before entering our prison are going to go directly into solitary, which is again why you wanna make sure you have some solitary cells prepared for those naughty, naughty inmates that are coming in with contraband. Look at how much contraband they're finding it's ridiculous so this is why having a proper reception is so important because all of your actual prisoners are going to be searched before entering the premises and now you'll see the ones that have been searched being escorted either to their individual cells or to solitary depending on if they were caught with something so satisfying seeing all of this come to life i love it all right and one last thing we're going to do before we start wrapping this episode up is we are going to change our regime here so that Basically, we're going to separate when inmates can access certain areas. So instead of having all of our prisoners go to canteen to eat at the same time, we're going to separate the minimum security and the regular security. That way it's a little bit easier for everybody to handle as far as our cooks go. And it's also it also minimizes the potential threat for mixing all the prisoners at the same time so we are going to just counterbalance things here you'll notice that i set their eat times to different schedules here and their free time and as well as their yard time again just minimizing the actual contact between prisoners is so important and it just allows for a much smoother running prison so do do take the time to edit your regime a little bit and set it to alternating times between security levels because it will help quite a bit will end up giving the minimum security a little bit more free time because they're minimum security so it's not quite as big of a risk and here we're going to make sure that the eat times are set differently and there you go so they eat twice a day at two different times a day they get yard time at different time of day and the minimum security will get free time more often you'll notice that I leave shower at the same time because they all have individual showers within their cells so it doesn't matter if they all shower at the same time again such a nice little handy part of having the showers in their actual individual cells but without any further ado guys this is actually where i'm going to cut this part of the tutorial there will be a part two where we actually get to see the prison live in action but for this i think this is the perfect spot to cut this and if you guys enjoyed this and you found this useful, please, please, please do hit that like, 
comment down below and most importantly hit that subscribe button every single time you guys subscribe it lets me know that you guys want to see more content like this and it does help my channel grow considerably so please make sure that you guys like hit subscribe and comment down below also don't forget to put the notification on so you're notified whenever i release another video without any further ado though guys this is double tap out